In this video, I'll show you how you can install Noco DB with your Canadian setup. So if you're using direct commands for Docker, there are two actual ways how you can do it. The first is by using SQLite DB, which is already built in. The other is by using Postgres. And as you can see, it has some other things it has to run. For example, if you start a Postgres database on this internal URL, and it's going to have this password, username, and the job secret to communicate between both of these. But the SQL method is just better and simpler. So we're just going to use this. And there are other ways, for example, Docker Compose, Homebrew or on Mac, and all the other Linux and all these methods that you can think of. But we're just going to use this. So I'm going to copy this command. And I've actually changed the command a bit. So if you see closely, it says PWD, which means print working directory. So it's going to, so wherever your terminal is running, it's going to take that location and then it's just going to append with this entire string. So rather than doing it, because everything for me is installed in this folder, which is C, Docker, and the actual folder. So I'm just going to use this command. And I'm also going to change the port because I'm using the 8080 port for some other application. So if you're not using it, you can just use it or you can just change this first part. So I'm going to copy this and take the code inside a text editor and change a few things. So as you can see, I'm going to run the NoCodeDB container in the detached mode. It's going to store everything here. And I'll actually select this to be 9090 so nothing interferes. I'm going to take this inside of Docker and open the terminal and then paste it here. So if you haven't downloaded NoCodeDB previously, it's going to download some files. And when it's done, it's going to give you a container ID, which it has created. And now you can see the container is created. It's actually using 120% CPU. So it's doing all the hard work in the backend. As you can see from here, it's mapping the database and all these things. So if I use this link to open NoCodeDB, it is going to take me to the signup page. So now you can see it's run. And here in the community, I also have a setup for base role, but I won't recommend it because it has some interference when you try to use the host or docker.internal. It just gives you some random errors. The page never loads and all these issues with base role. So I never recommend it, but I just made a video. So I just uploaded it and made it community only. So now I'm going to complete the onboarding. I'm going to use my email and a password. And I'm going to sign up. And there you go. So now you're inside the dashboard. That's how easy it is. With base row, people have faced many errors. It just never connects and all these things. But this is how just simple it is. And it also has a better UI and everything than base row. So the next thing we need to do is connect it to any then. So I have this simple thing here. What I'm going to do is click on credentials and create new credentials. Now, the first thing you need is the host. And for the host, you will use this port and you would be using the host.docker.internal method. And I explained in the previous video inside the community of what it means when you use localhost versus host.docker.internal. So I'm going to copy the URL here. And now this is done. The next thing is that I need to obtain the API token. Now we can create our API token and connect it to any DAM. I'm going to click on this button and select account settings. After I'm on the token section, the third one, I'm going to click on add new token. And now you can give it any name. I'm just going to leave it at token one. And I will copy this API token. Then head back to NADM, open the NoCodeDB node, click on credentials and create a new one. Then paste the token here. And for the host, as you already know, so I'm going to use the host.docker.internal and pair it with the 9090 port. And I'm going to take this and head back to NADM and paste the host here. And if I save it, you should see that the connection is successful. And now I can select my workspace, which is just no workspace. And now I have an option to select the base. A base is like a database, or if you want to take an analogy of Google Sheets. So this is like one sheet. So you can see that I have these bases here. I can create another one. From here, I'll click on create base and I'll say base test. And now I have another base. Now to refresh, what I'll do is go back and open the node again. And you should be able to see that I have the base test. And then I can select the table. And then I can just execute it. And there you go. It tells me that there is actually nothing right now. I can create a table inside of it. So now if I go back to NoCodeDB, you should see that I have a title here. And that's how you can connect NoCodeDB to NADN. Now I'm going to show you a few more things which you can do with NoCodeDB and NADN. So now I'll add another entry to our table. And then get the entry. Then get all the entries that we have. The first and the second one. I'll get all of them. 
I'll update one of them and then I'll delete it to show you everything that you can do. But there's actually one more thing that you can do. If you don't get some command here, which you like, so if you want to write custom API calls to NoCodeDB, which isn't provided here, so what you can do is, as you can see in create, at the end, there's a custom API call section. So if you select this, it's not going to work. So it's just going to direct you to make an HTTP node. So this is one more thing you can do. So if anything that's given here, that's not enough for you, and you want to use some custom command, like fetch some specific thing, and the options are not here, and you cannot form a query or something, then you should use the custom HTTP request. But if you're not doing anything complex, you shouldn't need it. So let's look at this command. I'm going to add the second value. And now you can see that it has been added to the fourth ID because I ran it two more times when I was testing. As you can see, now it's the ID four. And you can actually create many things. So you can customize it like you would just customize a Google Sheet or any other database. You can add images, you can add attachments, as you can see. So here, add another one, and now you can just upload anything. And you can send your images directly to NoCodeDB from any day and turn on the binary field and send in the data. So now I'm going to get the row and I'll say, get the row ID value two. that means the second one. And you should see that I get nothing. And there you go, I get no. But if I do four, I would get second, perfect, because there is second on the fourth one. Now to get all the rows, you can just select this one and you can set up your limit. And you can also select download attachments if you wanna attach it. So now you can see that I have five other rows and I get hello in the first, second in the fourth. Now I'll show you how you can use the update operation. And this is a bit tricky. Some people get lost in this. So the first thing that you need in the update operation is to specify the exact ID. And by ID, as I already told you, these are the IDs. So if I click on add field and the field name should be either ID like this, completely small, or it should be capital I and D. It cannot be completely capital ID or any other way. So what I'll do is just capital I and D. Right. So now the idea is that I want to change the eighth element to changed. Right. So that's what I want to do. So I will say that I want the title to be changed. And I will say the field value should be eight. Now, if I run this, you will see that I get an issue. Right. So it says duplicate record with ID. So this is one of the issues with NoCodeDB that you cannot just enter any field value. It has to be fetched from the previous one. So if you fetch it from the previous node, if you run it, you will see that everything is changed. And I'm going to refresh it. And there you go. So if you just want to change one of them, rather than fetching the ID from something which has nine elements, just fetch it from one. For example, if you want to change the ID four, I'll just get this one here and remove this. So through the API, changing is technically a two-step process. First, you get it. For example, you can just get it from this, and then you change it. So if I remove this node from here and i will say get fifth row i'll just say get sixth row then i get the sixth row is changed and now i can use that value here and i will replace this with this and i will say sixth and if i run it you should see that it has changed and now if i refresh it here then sixth has changed so to do it firstly get the row and then update it and now i can just delete the row and to delete it i have to do the same step i just have to get the id from the previous one and now it's deleted and now if you see here the sixth one is gone and that is how you do everything with no dp and if you want to have some custom command you'll have to use a custom api call and you can get all the information about it from the official NoCodeDB documentation which you can just access the official NoCodeDB documentation which you can just access from their official site if you go here and to the official site, you will find the documentation. And then you can click on docs here on their official site. And there you go. Now you have everything. So their APIs and all those things, developer resources, REST APIs, and it has all the information you might need.